So if you were watching mainstream media this weekend, holy smokes, I mean, you could sense it coming like a speeding train, couldn't you? Like unbelievable amount of pressure was about to unfold for the United States to be all but all like invade Ukraine because of the quote unquote genocide, the atrocities that we were we were seeing. The mainstream media ran with it. I mean, look at the headlines just over the past 24 hours, right? Ukraine accuses Russian soldiers of war atrocities with big pictures all splashed across the front pages of the New York Times. The Washington Post, Zelensky calls Russian invasion a genocide. Now, this is the narrative that the mainstream media ran with all weekend on the show and into this morning. Every major news story, every major news station. So you don't need us to rehash it this, you know, today, right? This is this is the narrative. Well, especially not if you watched the Grammys last night, which had Zelensky um, making a special appearance in an American musical award show, right. right? So not only is this leader allowed carte blanche to say whatever they want to all other world leaders, but also now in popular press. Now, why do we care, right, about the Grammys? Because America exports culture, right? And so if this sort of cultural pivot, like, marquee event of American culture is going to accept one world leader over others, well, then you can see what the main narrative is. Right. And nobody slapped him? <laughs> no, it was no, a Zoom call. There was no, yeah, there was no, no. Will Smith. But in that, this is the thing that most Americans are like focused on. It's like, you know, it's like the Will Smith, like what, oh, he resigned from the Academy. But meanwhile, like behind the scenes, what's actually unfolding is that the Western media is lining up ready to push more deeply into a all-out war with Ukraine. All you needed to do was watch over the past 24 hours to see uh, to see the mainstream media, specifically MSNBC, but to watch Ali Velshi particularly, to jump out and calling for all-out military involvement. So he went to Twitter and made some comments. The turning point for the West and NATO will come when the sun rises over Kiev on Sunday and the war crimes against civilian non-combatants become visible to all. There's no more time for prevarication. If never again means anything, then this is the time to act. Then Aaron Maté wrote, wrote, How do you propose the West and NATO act? What are you calling for? He says, direct military involvement. Whoa, then the cat was out of the bag. Because this is a... <laughs> This is a news anchor. He is, he's an anchor. He's not even a pundit, right? So they give him an anchor chair. Right. These things increasingly matter at this point because I do think that when certain media outlets say, look, this is our entertainment and this is our punditry and this is our news reporting, those things are valid, right? But CNN has been trying to make this point that they are unbiased, but this clearly is not biased. He is in the anchor chair. Nobody... Nobody should be mistaking him for a pundit. No, and he's there. He's in. He's there covering the story, and he is. He calls upon. Um, he had on a. I forget the guy's name. We'll put it up here on the screen. And you were talking about ways that Ukrainians can protect themselves, particularly in uh, urban warfare. But now, overnight, we have seen what has happened in these suburbs of uh, Kiev. The Russians have left, and what they have left behind is remarkable evidence of war crimes and atrocities. How does this change your thinking? If at all it has to change everybody's thinking ali this isn't bomb i'm i study urban warfare i've been in urban warfare. this isn't bombing of civilians that can be argued away as military targets it takes an intimate special kind of evil to wrap the hands of a civilian and shoot them in the back of the head this is clear war crimes is not the right word for me it's evil and if we don't stand up we like i'm speaking for myself as a u.s citizen if we don't stand up why are why are we a superpower? This isn't political. I'm pretty heated about this. You know that. This isn't political. Okay, this but why? Political. Okay, then the question then should the follow up question should be why don't we stand up in Yemen? Why don't we stand up in Ethiopia? Why don't we stand up in Syria? These are wars that are much bloodier that continue to rage on. Why then? Why this war now? Right? Exactly. And so as Caitlin Johnstone so eloquently writes in a piece this morning called Pundits Who Advocate Hot War with Russia Are Enemies of Humanity. And she took him to task on Twitter. I mean, she went after him and basically eviscerated him. And he says, look, I, I, I really do not take war lightly. And yet he's there openly calling for it. He says in an appearance on M she says in an appearance on MSNBC show, Ali Velshi, the Modern War Institute's John Sp Spencer explicitly advocated direct U.S. military conflict with Russia. 
due to allegations of war crimes in the Ukrainian city of Bucha. I'm ready to commit at this moment, unlike I was before this day, to put people in direct contact with Russia to stop Russia. 